This program is brought to you by thepodcastfactory.com. Canine crew, it's time to just sell the damn thing. Doberman Dan is revealing his contrarian formula for getting a rush of new customers, building your business faster, and making the highest possible profits. Go to JustSellTheDamnThing.com to get your copy today. Prepare yourself for the uncensored, nothing held back, no BS reality of how business and life really work. Doberman Dan is off the chain. Ever hear of a book called Effortless Mastery? Mm, Effortless Mastery. No, I don't think I have. So I started reading it again this weekend for about the seventh time. And I guess I'll I'll probably have to reread it mm, seven more times before I get probably more like 70 or 700. It's a book by it was so. Now that I think about it, I'm like 70 times 700. You know, I think I'm going to have to keep rereading this book until I die. Because I may never totally get this. But That sounds totally effortless. Yeah, exactly. I I don't, I would be dead before I reach (laughs) totally effortless mastery, even though that's the goal. But So this was written for musicians. It was written by a guy named Kenny Werner, jazz piano player. And my God, was it ever needed for musicians. I've never seen more screwed up in the head, neurotic people, the musicians. But so now it has, I don't know how long ago you wrote it, but now it has caught on with, well, really any high performer or person who wants to be a high performer. But musicians need this like really bad because so on one side, I say musicians, I I see this this problem I'm about to describe more with guitar players <laughs> than other musicians. But so, so on one side, we, we've got the hacks with like an ego the size of Texas, you know, who think they're the best player in the world. With guitar players, you know, they've learned the pentatonic scale, which is a five note scale, which you can play over pretty much just any rock song or blues song or pop song, you know. So, of course, guitar players, such huge egos. The first thing I do is just spend hours, months, years practicing the pentatonic scale with a metronome so they can play it fast. Like it's a freaking athletic competition. Who can burn through the pentatonic scale faster than the other guy? And then let's put down and make fun of the other guy who who can play can only play the pentatonic scale slower, you know. So the, on the one side, we have those guys. On the other side, we have the truly <laughs> brilliant players who are always just like one step away from suicide. They think they suck so bad. Like Alan Holdsworth, perfect example of that. Every guitar player, every musician looks at that guy like he is not mortal. He Well, he's passed away now, but when he was alive, he's from another planet. This guy is so far ahead of every other musician, composer, guitarist. You know, as one guy said at a trade show, I saw Alan at the NAMM show. He was eating a sandwich. I guess that proves that uh, he is mortal. <laughs> so we have those guys, the truly brilliant people who just neurotic. They think they suck so bad, like they'll never achieve the ideal they have in their head. Th- these are the perfectionists, by the way, who, who never allow themselves like a single moment of joy in creating music because they're, they're just too busy beating themselves up about their perceived lack of abilities. and. Uh, And by the way, I can tell you from experience, my dear listener, life is completely and utterly miserable for the people in the perfectionist camp. Like I still deal with that daily, not just in the music thing. But so so for for people like that, they really needed uh, effortless mastery. But so imagine this. And here's the breakthrough, paradoxical breakthrough, I guess which makes no sense to almost everybody. And this is what Kenny Werner, the author of Effortless Mastery said, how does one achieve that level of musicianship, of humanness? How does one evolve into a riveting presence so worthy of praise? Limited goals such as trying to impress people, find security, play quote unquote valid jazz and so on, block that goal. Surrender is the key. 
And the first thing to surrender is one of the most prized possessions, your obsessive need to sound good. This is a paradox that most people can prove through their own experience. It was in, in that moment, quote ended, <laughs> in that moment, I realized that's exactly what I had done in my business life. I had surrendered my, the, I mean, strike that, back up. First nine years, continual serial entrepreneurial failure, like at least three businesses a year for nine straight years. Everything failed. It, it wasn't like they started working and later failed. <laughs> None of them ever started working. Not one single business made a dime or ex even experienced any kind of success. Nine long years, at least three businesses a year, sometime more. Not one single business ever got off the ground. So yeah, I'm thick-headed, I guess. Took me a while to figure it out. Nine years is a long time. But I reached a point where I stopped trying to quote unquote sound good, like Kenny Werner's talking about, and just started creating perfectionism be damned. And, and, and by the way, if, <laughs> if you've read any of, my, uh, any of the ready, fire, aim emails that I occasionally send, then you know that I still don't worry about sounding good thing, you know, often with my sales copy or my daily emails. So there are people, JR, listening to this message right now who say they're an internet marketer or copywriter or entrepreneur or whatever they define themselves as. Especially, this is like epidemic amongst the people who call themselves internet marketers, okay? They've never actually created and released anything. Why? Because of their obsessive need to sound good, quote unquote, sound good. Now, why? Yeah, we, we could blame perfectionism. That's just a symptom. It ain't the root cause. The real issue here is, drum roll, please. Brrr, ding. Fear. They've allowed it to paralyze them. I mean, when, which is pretty illogical when you stop and think about it. I mean, after all, what they are allowing to keep them broke and stuck in a life of quiet desperation is a, just a mere, it's, it's an illusion they created in their own mind. I mean, there really is nothing to fear, which by the way, do you know what an NDE is, JR? NDE? Yes, sir. I do not. I don't think I do. Okay, so it stands for near-death experience. Ah. Now, the people you talk to who've had a, a near-death experience, oftentimes, most times, have a very changed perspective of this reality. And, uh, and it definitely it takes care of this fear thing. Now imagine having two near-death experiences a week for three straight weeks. Mm. You want to talk about a change in reality. Which, by the way, I agreed to do that under the care of a doctor. One day, I might talk about it. Probably the first place I'll talk about it will be in the Doberman Dan letter. But right now, the Colombiana's busting my chops about it and saying it's too personal and should only be shared with, like, very close inner circle Paying people. members. Well, she's <laughs> even talking about it's too personal for that even. Yes, um, my point being... After those NDEs, I, I have come to accept the fact there really, there is nothing to fear. I mean, I've got more than three decades in this entrepreneur thing. So, you know, and that, that includes my nine initial years of serial entrepreneurial failure. It's actually more than three decades. If you go back to, you know, when I was in sixth grade and had entrepreneurial ventures, like I had a paper route and I was a concert promoter. I promoted my own concert and sold tickets to that for my well, band I was in. It's more than three decades, but we'll, we'll, we'll count my starting businesses as an adult. So it's more than three decades. After all that, I'm here to tell you, and if you are one of the many people who is paralyzed by fear, nothing but good is going to come from starting that business project album, artwork, or whatever you've been talking about for so long. You hear me? Yes. Nothing 
but good will come from it. So let's say, let's say, let's do a worst case scenario on this thing. Let's say the, the worst case thing happens. You go broke, you lose everything, you're homeless. Oh, and on top of that, everybody abandons you, including your family. Of course, except your wonderful gift from God, your Doberman. And you and your dog, you, you have to live in this piece of shit Ford, 15-year-old Ford Taurus you bought for 1500 bucks and eat 99 cent cans of tuna. Even if that happens, I will repeat myself. And there are very few things in this life that I'm sure of anymore, except this. Nothing but good will come from it. And I know, because that's exactly what I just described is exactly what happened to me. And it was the best thing that ever happened to me in my entire life. Because, yeah, that was humiliating. But like a mere four months later, I was making six figures a month. However, the money wasn't the real reward, okay? It was just a scorecard. The real reward was who I became in the process. A dude the world tried to beat to death and damn near did. But I got up and I fought and I discovered this. There is nothing to fear. So I gave up trying to quote unquote sound good and just got on with the business of doing. And you know the rest of the story, right? Okay, so now I'm rich and famous and everything I touch turns to gold. <laughs> How about no? Really, I mean, out of every 10 things I try, seven of them crash and burn. So, and, and, that's, and that's better than it's been in the past. My track record is better these days. You know, 30 years ago, actually back it up to even 22, 23 years ago when I discovered direct response marketing, then it was like nine out of every 10 things I tried crashed and burned. Yikes. So, so, you know, maybe you bought into the publicity or other people tell my story and, and I'm amazed to hear how it is, you know, morphed into something different. You know, when I hear my story from other people, I'm like, my God, that dude is Superman, you know, like, so if you bought into that and, you know, everything I do makes a million bucks in less than three minutes all that stuff. If only, man. I mean, like I fail on a very regular basis. We did a show about this recently, about the, the comparison of my two different clients and what I told them, like three plus decades in this. I don't think that ever changes, never changes. You know, talk to people who've been in it five decades who are making a more than a billion dollars a year, never changes for them. So I fail on a very regular basis. And listen, when some of my projects crash and burn, the, the fiery disaster is pretty freaking spectacular. I mean, I often stand there watching and wonder, just enjoying the catastrophe <laughs> in the fireworks. Hell, I even admire it, you know? Well, look at that thing burn. It's, it's like getting to witness the demolition of some old grand structure like the Empire State Building or something. But you know, and I rejoice in that demolition for this reason, because I know what follows the biggest failures are the biggest successes. Listen, I'm, I, I know I'm no Tony Robbins, Jr. <laughs> you can back that up, right? Absolutely. I'm, I'm not I'm not trying to motivate you. I've learned I can't motivate anybody but myself. I've tried, but I learned that. I, so I no longer try. Today, I'm just merely stating facts, facts I'm as sure of as I'm sure the sun will rise tomorrow. And listen, now lean in and listen good. This is what I'm sure of. Nothing but good will come from surrendering, quoting, quoting Kenny Werner. Nothing but good is going to come from surrendering your obsessive need to sound good. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Sorry. I, 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 you know, boom, that was me dropping the mic. Although, wait, 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 hold on a minute. Hold on. <laughs> I got to pick the mic back up, which totally, that totally blows my dramatic <laughs> drop the mic ending, right? Yeah, a little bit. All right. Edit that out, please. Let's, let's edit start all that this. out. Actually, don't. I'm not afraid of making an ass of myself in public. I do it quite often. Come on, you you got to sound good, though, don't you? Yeah, that's right. I, you know, still, that's why I'm rereading Effortless Mastery. So, all right, so I'm picking the mic back up because I left something out, something pretty important. Uh, if, if you haven't picked up on this already uh, by reading between the lines, 
surrendering your obsessive need to sound good ain't exactly easy, <laughs> nor is celebrating your failures. I, I may have made it sound easy like, I enjoy, oh, look at that project crash and burn. Well, I was, you know, <laughs> that ain't exactly that celebrating your failures thing ain't exactly easy. But and, and trust me, I was not a happy person during those nine straight years of entrepreneurial failures. And by the way, that the fact that I was not a happy person, that was a big part of the problem <laughs> why those businesses were failing. But that's a topic for another time. And it is extremely difficult to go through all this alone. Now that I said that, I thought I was specifically speaking of the the failures, but the successes too. It's really hard to go through that alone. And truth be told, I think it's damn near impossible to successfully start a business alone. You're going to struggle a lot more than you have to. And, and probably, you know, just like I did during my long nine year stretch, you're going to have to wait a lot longer to make money than, than you really need to. So why do you do that when there's no need to? I mean, well, first of all, I've provided a way for you to get through the learning curve faster and start making money, you know, so you get to the money making part a lot faster. All you can read all about it at marketingcamelot.com. But whatever you do, you know, you've got to have that support, whether it's you know, a group, a mastermind group, a, a coaching group, a coach, you know, a membership like my marketing Camelot, you know, you've got to have that support of people around you who have done it and or are going through surrendering their obsessive need to sound good. Boom. Now I'm dropping the mic. Dunk. <laughs> sound effect added. Uh Dan, can you pick that mic up again and tell us what's coming up next week? <laughs> Jeez, man. <laughs> I had already walked off stage. Peace, I'm out. Boom. You know, and now you you call me back for an encore. <laughs> All right. What am I going to talk about next week? I am going to talk about how to trade in your illusion for a life. Interesting. All right. Looking forward to it. Another off the chain shows in the can. We'll be back in your earbuds next time. Hope you enjoyed today's show. Canine Crew got a special treat for you. What we are affectionately referring to as the Off the Chain Hotline. Tell us you love us. Tell us you hate us. Ask questions. We don't care. Just call 321-424-6043 and give us a piece of your mind. This is the PodcastFactory.com.